Right. Well, guys, I figure I'll tell you about my day and show you a little hauls, a couple hauls I got today. Um, first thing that happened down here where I live, uh, power went out, okay? So basically about once or twice a month, I get a brownout in this house to begin with. I got to be careful not to be late for work. And uh, But, you know, apparently I had a brownout during the night. It got cool in the house, put me in a deeper sleep, but, you know, I didn't get a, it wasn't a restful sleep, if that makes any sense. So when I woke up, I kind of, it was around 8 o'clock, I think, 10 till 8 or something like that. Started walking around and uh, did a few things here and there, and then I just laid back down, man. Okay. And then when I woke up, man, I couldn't get the internet going, and I started looking around, and the house was getting really cold again. And But, you know, I was like, what, what's going on? Power was out. So basically, in I think about two counties here, the power went out. And... You know, I was like, well, so I sat around the house and I was waiting. And then finally, I started seeing my breath. I haven't seen my breath in my house, you know, in 30 years when I had a, you know, we had a cold burning stove to keep the house warm. And I went outside and it was actually probably about 5 or 10 degrees warmer outside than in my house. So, could not take a shower because of, uh, I'm on a well here and you had to have electricity to get the well going. And uh, it looked like crap. So, I just went out, jogging pants and all. And there's no, that's when I started finding out there's no power in town. I went over to the next town, and I, you go all the way through town, and there was a block. I guess you could say it was a block, but pretty much anything that was around the Walmart had power. So there was like a Taco Bell and, and Arby's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and all this stuff. And uh, so I was like, man, man, you know. So now we're up to like around noon or something. I, you know, it's kind of a th thing. So I went over to the next town, found out they were they were also having a few problems with electricity, and the strangest thing started happening. You know, it started at the the Arby's where I stopped to eat and stuff, where there's so much power down and internet was down and people weren't on their phones as much and stuff. Uh, I guess you know I guess they were trying to save the battery or whatever's going. On. I don't have a phone that'll get the internet. It's, you know, people were getting pleasant. People were actually talking. I actually ended up having a few conversations here and there. People were a lot friendlier. I lived down here about a year and a half, and there just is not a friendly place, you know. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's right. I like when the power goes out. I like when we get down to being a little bit more primitive, I guess, and because people seem to really change. You know, they want that interaction again. You know, maybe I'm just turning an old fart. So I went down to that other town and stuff, and uh, uh, hit an antique store and walked around in it and here's what I got at the antique store I actually got some good stuff uh, this stuff might have come to five dollars I'll be surprised if it did make sure I'm organized here all right first thing I found was uh, the dread star uh, graphic novel I think this is from 83 some great stuff it's uh, by Jim Starlin and it kind of looks like some of it's painted all right so that's Marvel Graphic Novel number three. Uh, it's a second edition, but that's all right, you know. So let me find a good page here to show you, because that's what we do around here when we buy comics. We actually open it up and show people. And you know, sci-fi. And you know, if I've read any Dread Star, it's probably an Epic magazine or something back in the day. I, I haven't read any since the '80s, so it's gonna be like a whole new read. Before I move on there, the thing about the power going out that really got me, I'm doing this, is that I got a package for Hippie I was going to take out, and I think I had two more packages, and there's no power for the post offices. So Hippie, if you're watching, you got your package for you. So it'll be mailed out this week. Power came back on, according to this clock, flashed over here about four hours ago, so currently it's four o'clock today. Moving on. So at that antique shop, another thing I got here, I saved this. This was a buck fifty, if anything is a beat-up copy of uh, Kill Raven by P. Craig Russell. Marvel, Marvel graphic novel. I don't see a number on it. Number seven. And this is from 83. And this is a... It's sad. This is a first print, man. But this thing is discolored. And it's had a price tag on it. This thing is well-loved. You know. It's great art in this. You know. Let's take a gander at that. P. Craig Russell is a really underrated uh, artist. Uh, this is from 83 also, man. They were putting these things out. And these things were $5.95 in the U.S. back in 83, man. That, that was a good chunk of change to get something back then. Then I found this. Uh, this thing was a buck, and I used to love these. Some of the early Spider-Man books that I read. I had one of these that was uh, Spider-Man, reprinted Spider-Man um, 
Oh my gosh, what was it? 12, 13? No, that's when the Hulk popped up in Fantastic Four. But anyway, there was a Ditko um, Spider-Man where he's in a cave and he runs across uh, the Incredible Hulk. And to get away from him, he jumps into a dirty, nasty, stagnant, you know, little uh, hole full of water, little pond inside of a cave and hides in it until the Hulk walks off, which always cracked me up. But anyway, for a buck, I got this uh, Doctor Strange little book here. I don't know what it reprints, but uh, I, I loved these things when I was a kid. Master of the Mystic Arts. It's in full color. This is apparently number two. Uh, here it is. Reprints Strange Tales 130 through 144. That's what it says here. This is from 1979. 79, yeah, I can believe it. Okay. So, you pretty much took the comics and shrunk them down. And the Spider-Man one I was talking about, it seems like it didn't have as many panels. They really stretched that issue out here, man. But, yeah, we got some, looks like some Ditko stuff in there. Yeah, so, really glad to find that. That was for a book. And then I found this, and I don't think it's worth too much, but I didn't want to take the chance. Um, got this for a steal. This is from, let me make sure of the year now. I think it's from 1978. 1978. This is number eight of the Overstreet Comic Price Guide from 1978. And it's got a, uh, I think it's a Bill Ward cover. I think that's what his name was. But I recognize his style, man. He, uh, I think this is the dude that did little Annie Fanny in uh, Playboy magazines back in the day. That little comic strip that was in it. And of course, you know, it's a bad girl issue. And of course, it would have bondage on there and headlights. So, kind of cool to see all that. Um, probably gonna put this on eBay. I'll flip through it. But what was interesting is that uh, back in 1978, Fantastic Four number one, a mint copy went for 600, and a not so mint copy went for 200. So I would have took out a loan. Told them I was buying a car if I knew where to buy one of those. So it's gonna be interesting to see this. You know, and of course, they still had the traditional uh, showing some covers. There's Rima. That's cool. That was cool to find. So that was a steal. So then I, you know, I started heading back and I went to a Goodwill. And this stuff came to six bucks, but it's because I gave a dollar and some change to some kind of fundraiser thing they were doing. I don't even remember what it was for, man. And for 50 cents, the first thing I found was this record of the Dream Academy from 1985. Um, I really liked the song they had called Life in a Northern Town and never really ran across this. So it was cool to find this. The record's in perfect shape. Uh, only thing wrong with it is apparently it's got a box cut on the cover, but it's okay. thing is they kept it in the plastic. They do what I do on everything. They just cut it up the side. So everything, that's why the record looks like it's in, you know, it's in such good shape. So that was cool to find. Um, got me a few CDs. I got a few uh, uh, CDs I'm going to get when I get paid. But um, basically I got these for $0.35 cents a piece. This is uh, Mr. Big. And... This is uh, Lean Into It. I think this is their second album from 91. It's a cassette. Uh, they got the CD of this. I'm going to go back and get it because it's got a song I love called, uh, I really like, called uh, Green Tinted 60s Mind. Which, if you say it real fast, sounds like Green Tinted 69. It's a really sweet song. This is the one that's got their big hit to be with you and, you know, whatever. But I like Green Tinted 60s Mind. I like that better. And then I got this. I think these are the guys from Yes. Four of the guys from Yes didn't call themselves Yes. They were Anderson, Br Bruford, oh man, Wayneman, and Hal. Uh, got this. And I recognize it because that's a Yes cover. And then I started remembering. It seems like they made a video or two out of this back in the day. So there's, that would have been the record cover. Um, looks like this is from 89. So... I'll be interested to look at. And then I found a soundtrack, the CD. I cannot believe I never picked up the CD. I didn't even know it was out there. I didn't know they had a soundtrack for this, man. But this is from 92, and this is one of Brad Pitt's first movies. Uh, and I'm a Ralph Batsky fan, but I absolutely hated this movie, Cool World. But what you hear is on the soundtrack, okay? David Bowie, Thompson Twins, uh, Ministry. With uh, that song, with their song "New World Order," NWO "New World Order," I love that song. The Cult from the '80s. Now that's that's I got almost all their CDs. The Cult, uh, they have punk roots in them. You can kind of hear it in there. Uh, a song called "The Witch," which I don't know if I'll know if I hear it or not. It's got Moby before. I, I didn't think Moby'd been around that long. Um, who else they got here? 
Brian Eno. And if you guys know Bowie, then you know who Brian Eno is. So I couldn't believe that. I can't wait to listen to this, man. I mean, that's some eclectic stuff. Hollywood, if she could. And this had Kim Basinger and, um, what was that guy's name? Brad Pitt, Kim Basinger, and Gabriel Byrne. It had Gabriel Byrne in it. Uh, awful movie, but I can't wait to hear that. Okay, so I was riding around. Oh, yeah, and I got this, too. This was for 50 cents. I got this for 50 cents. I have the complete far side of a bunch of these little books, but the complete far side really isn't the complete far side. He uh, sometimes put little uh, things in, these, in the bigger books where it was uh, pages and pages of new stuff, and, of course, you had the covers. So I got that for 50 cents. I love the far side. Uh, make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Yeah, that was it. And uh, another thing that was kind of cool, this is the second month in a row where they must be using my deposit where I moved down here, but this is the second month in a row where I got a uh, z zero balance on my electric bill. So they're, you know, I've read this thing. And I, I think they're using my, um, I think they're using my uh, crap deposits from last year and they reamed, they reamed me when I moved down here so you know I'm sitting there thinking okay treat yourself treat yourself so I went down to look at the Halloween stuff at Walmart again they don't have anything it's pretty bad I mean they got stuff but it's not worth looking at and I ran across this for 12 bucks and I had two dollars in my pocket and you know some change here and there but I got uh, Legends of Mid-South Wrestling Okay, so these documentaries are usually pretty good. I don't know anything about Mid-South. I looked up uh, a couple months ago, I looked up some shows. They got actual complete shows on YouTube. I, I didn't know what was going on, man. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, who knows if they had a storyline and stuff. But I heard a lot of people came out of Mid-South in the 80s, if you knew, um, you know, if you know your wrestling. Like, it's where Ted DiBiase was hanging out and McMahon called him up so that he can be... Uh, the Million Dollar Man, Terry Funk told him, Mix Vince McMahon calls, you need to go, and had a, you know, Junkyard Dog, and uh, this is where uh, Jake the Snake was honing his craft and stuff. I remember seeing these guys on Mid-Atlantic, and I remember seeing them on a, a Georgia Wrestling on TBS and stuff, so, you know, One Man Game came from there, and I go on and on. I don't think there's a lot of wrestling fans out there except for the legend and Rorschach's Journal that I'm aware of. So I stopped by the comic book shop, and I uh, haven't been there in a while. And of course, you know, the power's out there and tune and stuff, but I picked up a few books, got a pretty good deal on this stuff, and he wrote my car number down. I trust them. I'll check it, you know, at the bank too and stuff. And got these for a dollar a piece and stuff, and some of these are going to go on eBay. But I uh, ended up getting, uh, you know, a run of, uh, another run of Batman the Dark Knight. This is number 15 uh, from the new 52. And then I got the Sky where Skyver started out with the Mad Hatter, 16. 17. I'm really going to have to read these before I send them out. 18. And then I think it jumps up to 21. Yep, 21. So I'll be putting that lot as a lot on eBay pretty soon. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know if this is the completest. I don't know if it's where it had Morrison and Ellis on it and stuff. But I ran into a run of Ultimate Fantastic Four with some holes in it at a few months ago at a yard sale. And I found number two. Uh, and number three, there's only 60 issues. I might as well go for it, man. These things go cheap. And then for a book, I got Saga. Number, uh, what is this, 13. Let's see what's going on with Saga. And I got two, three issues in the back. I'm probably going to put them up there. And then I really wanted to get this. Very few things I have, uh, Marvel, Marvel and DC have not done a whole lot that's really been exciting me lately. I mean, just to be honest. And some of the things that did excite me when I kind of read it, it you know, uh, I think it was a little bit hyped, you know, and I'm not going to be, you know, Mr. Doodoo and stuff, but something that uh, this Jonathan Hickman did that I was really excited to hear about it, and I'm going to ignore the fact that this has already popped up in the Marvel Universe in Quasar 20 years ago. Maybe they explain it, maybe it's a different beast, I don't know. But I got really excited and curious to see where this was going, but I couldn't find it. Um, you know, he has problems getting shipping from Diamond, and the comic book shop is going to get worse. He said in the last two weeks they've sent him empty boxes, and one of those weeks he got charged fifty dollars for shipping. And now his diamond distributor that was in Tennessee has told him they're going to New York. So he doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't know when he's going to get books. But I digress, you know. But anyway, this is um, Avengers number eight by Hickman, Jonathan Hickman. This is where they pulled the new universe in, um, kind of. Uh, 
I, I don't think it's the New Universe characters and stuff. A lot of people probably already read this. But New Universe started back in 86, and it was like, what if, uh, you know, people with power started popping up in the real world? The comics took place in real time. You had DP7, Nightmask, Starbrand, Kickers Incorporated, Spitfire and the Troubleshooters, um, Merc, Justice, and, you know, uh, my, that might have covered everybody. And they kind of ended up kind of taking the books in another direction. And actually one of the things that led to Shooter getting fired, one of many things. But anyway, they were pulling them in and apparently making them part of the Marvel continuity, if Marvel does have continuity anymore. So I'm really curious on reading this. Uh, kind of, you know, I feel pretty good about it. Okay, so basically now what I'm going to do is I got a few videos planned to keep talking about. Uh, I'm shooting this on the hip. I think I'm going to uh, watch my DVD. A little bit later, probably listen to a record. And I treated myself again to a little pepperoni pizza with some buttery garlic dip. So, there's my eye. So, you guys carry on, read some comics, and enjoy the smell of the old comics.